All right, so when you're looking at this, we have our initial rough drawing. And then you're gonna see that I started to go in and sort of clean up some of my edges. What you want to be careful with is that you're not making your outlines too dark. If they're too dark, you're gonna have a hard time when it comes to your shading, to getting things to blend um, to the darker side. Okay, so I'm just gonna, just enough to clean it up, but not pressing super hard. Again, I'm holding my pencil at the back, so that way I'm not having too much pressure. Just cleaning up those edges. This is when you should also still be looking at your object because your object may have little dents and divots that are going to change the angle of your drawing and change your shading as well. If you want to take a photo of yours and the angle that you're actually working in, then that was probably going to be a good idea. So that way you have a photo to work from instead of having to work from your object every day. Just clean that up. Because now's the time to clean things up. It's down, there's a little like tail thing here that sticks out. So those little details that are going to make your drawing look more realistic. Your edges are likely not perfectly straight. Now, if you aren't working with a photo, you're probably going to have to work with your um, your object a little bit more carefully each time to make sure that the object is in the correct position. I'm just kind of adjusting mine. You know, look for like here, I made this little U-shape because that's what it actually looks like. And then there's the bend from here. And I have this one that kind of comes out and flares too. All right, so I have my drawing all cleaned up. Be sure to dust off any eraser shavings as you go. The other thing that you're going to want to do at this point is to put in your ground line, okay, or your horizon line. I'm just going to take my ruler. You can use any straight edge. You can do it higher if you want. You can do it lower. What you don't want is to do it like down here because then what is your object actually sitting on? I like to do mine middle-ish, maybe a little bit higher or lower than the middle. I'm going to do mine right about there. What you want to look out for, though, is that your line is not going to intersect, or run into any points. Like, I wouldn't want to do it right here, because if I did it right along there, it's going to look kind of weird because it runs right into this corner. So that's just a little awkward. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not going to be incorrect, but it's just going to look a little bit weird. It's going to be more effective for you if you do it kind of like, I'm going to do mine. Again, I don't want to do it right here because that's going to intersect with that line, even though it's not on the edge, but so it's not so bad. So I'm going to do mine right about there. So make sure that my ruler is lined up even. Hold my paper so it doesn't move on me. I'm just going to draw a light line. What that line is going to do is it's going to give you your background and your tabletop, okay, or what your object is sitting on. At this point, once you have this drawing all transferred, it's cleaned up, you think it's good to go, then go ahead and take a photo and upload it and wait for me to okay it. If that has already been done, then you're ready to start doing your shading. Okay, so with your drawing from one side to the next, you need to look and ask yourself, which is darker? Is this side darker or is this side darker? When we look back at the photo, this side is darker. So I'm just going to go and lightly, again, I'm holding my pencil from the back so I have less pressure. I'm just going to lightly go in. I'm not worrying about making things perfect right now, the exact right shade. I just want to show that this side is darker. This is what we're going to call the local value. When I'm grading these drawings, I'm going to be looking to see, can you tell from your drawing that you can see light versus dark? Okay, again, right now, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can still see the different directions of my um, pencil strokes, and that's fine. Now I'm going to go and look from here to here, which is darker. This side is darker. So again, I'm going to go and fill in local value. Your objects are white. 
But just because the object is white doesn't mean your entire paper is going to stay white. You have to look and see where that shadow is. That's the reason I do this assignment. Again, turn your paper so that you work smarter, not harder. Your wrist goes in a natural direction and natural movement. Use that to your advantage. But I do these white objects so that way you have to be able to see that there are shadows. And like if something like this happens, it's probably because something was underneath your paper, like an eraser shading or something. This is the point where you want to try to clean that up because later on, trying to go back and match that, it's going to be a pain. And I think what's actually happening there is that I can, I can see a smudge here too. I probably had some oil on my hand and that graphite holds on to the oil. So you want to always work with clean hands. Okay, from here to here, this side is darker. I'm going to go right up to your edge. Right now, I'm not worrying about blending out my outlines. We're going to talk about that in a bit. But I'm just applying that local value, okay? Between here and this little inset part, this little inset part is darker. So now I just need to make sure that I make this little wedge in here darker than the shape next to it. This gets a little bit harder between these two objects, but this looks like it's darker, but there is a shadow that kind of comes up like this. Okay, and that's gonna make a difference for me later on. So I am just gonna be careful. I'm gonna shade just this area in here because right now you're gonna see these two are the same shade, right? And so that we can't end up leaving that, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, now between here and here, the middle's darker, but I'm also looking at this one. It's not as dark as this, but it is darker than this. So I'm going to go and I'm going to shade in this middle part. But I am going to go and make it just a little bit darker because the relative value is what we're looking at. The relative local value. This is darker than this, but this is darker than this. But these two, this one's darker. Okay. Then between this and this, this side is darker. That's all I'm doing is going shape by shape and asking myself, which is darker? You just repeat that process throughout the whole thing. Okay, so now I've got basic value. This got turned on me though. So as your object turns, it's gonna do weird things to your what you're looking at. Okay, from here to here, this is still lighter. This middle part is darker. It's darker kind of like this one. And this is still pretty light in here. This is when you need to start looking for different values. Okay, so now when I'm looking between these two sides, back here is darker. So I'm gonna take from this line, and this is when you're gonna to start to get rid of those outlines and make them edges. Remember, edges are where two things meet. So I'm gonna take from there, I'm just gonna blend that out. And down from this line, Blend this out. This is not a hard line. This kind of fuzzes. So I'm just going to blend that out. But now, I've got, remember this side, this little part was lighter. This is now what's darker. So, and it's darker right along this whole edge because it's darker than this side also. But not up at the top, just down here. I'm going to take from here and I'm going to right along the edge. Just blend that. Just do a quick blend into the side of that object. Now I'm looking in here and there is a shadow that kind of goes in the triangle. And I'm just going to lightly fill that in. This is darker than this. But this does start to get a little dark edge along here. I'm just going to take and blend that out. Because again, like this one, it's not a hard edge shadow. It just kind of fuzzes out. And I need to take a look at this and see what exactly happens here. And this corner is darker. Blend that into the shape. It's all about layering and blending. Now I can come over here, this edge, so I can still see this outline. So now I need to take this outline and I'm going to go right to the edge, tip of my pencil, and just blend that line into the shape. Okay, it's just a very subtle thing. Just blend it into the shape. Notice I'm not just creating a thicker outline. I'm blending it into the shape. Okay, because now this becomes an edge. This is a little bit darker. I can see it on the screen. So now I can just go through and give myself just a light, another light layer, just to kind of blend that in, smooth things out so we don't see the pencil marks. 
when you guys do turn these in, I want to see the value changes. I want to see the full range of values. I don't want to see your pencil marks. And I don't want to see any outlines. Okay, so I've almost gotten this one blended out. But what's going to happen is you can end up with these real pale lines right next to your outline. They create like this halo and then it loses the illusion. I'm going to go over here, do the same thing. I'm going to end up repeating that throughout. But this is just starting with the local value. You will need to shave the background. You will need to shave the tabletop. When I look at my photo, my object, this area under here is the darkest area. It is the blackest black. This is almost as dark as this, but this is the darkest. So when you're sure of where your stuff's going to be, then you can go ahead and go in and go really, really dark. It's going to blend out. So it's going to go from like an eight value up here to like a seven value down here where this is like a six, five. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about when I'm saying the numbers, go and look back at your step to value scale. So when we go and put that dark, dark in there and get that true shadow, that cast shadow, then that helps get rid of these edges or these outlines and he creates those edges. And this is going to be dark to about here. And this is where it starts to kind of fade out into more of this like level seven. Okay, go right up that edge. And again, if you see, it's got that little tiny area. It's not quite up to the edge. You go right up to that edge. It's going to make the illusion that much more realistic. I want to get that filled in nice and dark. And it's going to take some time in these shadow areas to get the dark filled in as dark as it needs to be. That's something that you can kind of do while you're just sitting watching TV. And then from here, that's when we kind of start blending it out to that level seven. Okay, so that's how I'm going to kind of work that tabletop. For your shadow in the background, this is where you want to be able to get rid of your outlines in the back. So if, since this is such a light object, you're probably still going to want your background to be a little bit darker than this, not nearly as dark as this. So to find that value, it's going to turn this around. So I'm just going to start right on this line and blend out. So I want to get rid of this outline and still keep the edge and figure out what value that needs to be. So my background's probably going to be in that value range. As you work your way around, when you get over here, you know, it's going to be about the same value here. But for this one, just figure out which one you want to make darker. I may just make this a little bit darker and lighten that part up just a little bit. Again, blend out your pencil lines. But just like we did with the sphere, just kind of get your local value filled in. You can always go back and smooth out the pencil marks. And you see that I, this is darker, so now I know that I need to go back in. And when I adjust and blend out my background, I can start to adjust that value change as well. That's going to help create this as an edge. This, where I still have that extra pencil mark, I can go back in and erase that little stray mark. Be careful when you're brushing things off because at this point with this much graphite, you're going to start to have smudging, which you don't want. Take a piece of scratch paper, keep it under your hand. So that way when your hand's moving back and forth, it's not smearing the graphite that you have underneath. As long as you start to get some of your local shading in today, you're going to be okay. And we'll take a look at it next week. Good job, guys.